Hi, my name is Walt Subkew. I'm the course chair for EGMT Systems Engineering Analysis. The course is partially based on a book that I wrote called Systems Practices as Common Sense. The book is a result of my noticing that there was no single text that housed many of the practices that I used in systems engineering. I also noticed that to get exposure to the full breadth of systems engineering, many years of experience are needed, usually in very special systems driven organizations. So I tried to develop an overview that would introduce new practitioners to many different systems practices and get them to the point where they could perform in any system setting. That is also the goal for the Systems Engineering Analysis course. Today I'm here to talk about what I think is an important topic, the impact of a systems education. I'm going to try to convince you that you should take all of the systems related courses within EGMT. Now that is a tall order. So getting back to impact of a systems education. What a loaded statement. I could spend all day talking about it. Maybe you should go get a pitcher of beer, bottle of wine, and crackers before I begin. Okay, there's the personal perspective and the broader social perspective. Then there's the word education to consider. Let me start with the personal perspective. When we are children, most of us attend elementary, junior high, or middle, and then high school. During that time, we are exposed to history, literature, art, and the sciences. We are told the exposure to all of this material is to help us to decide our specialty once the time comes to enter college. In many ways, we are being treated like systems people, as though the systems perspective is the natural order. When we enter college, we are told that we must specialize. The body of knowledge is so vast that it's impossible to consume this knowledge in a lifetime, let alone a few short years at a university. Many of us specialize, especially if we pursue engineering or the sciences. When we leave the university, we take our specialist knowledge into an organization. We find that the organization rarely uses the content of all the class material we were exposed to in the university. Instead, we are introduced to new knowledge in the form of processes, practices, tools, and technologies that are unique to the industry and the organization. However, because of our university experience, we find we are able to quickly come up to speed and start to contribute in our narrow specialty. Without knowing it, we learned how to learn. Eventually we find ourselves moving from very narrow areas to broader areas with more responsibility and impact. All of a sudden we find ourselves developing new products or systems, getting involved in proposals, traveling, and engaged in managing newly minted college graduates like we were only a few short years ago. It is rare when someone can stay in their original narrow specialty and some might even view it as a stalled career. Whether we like it or not, we move into the system's place. This is a place where we are exposed to other specialties to the point where we can understand their impact on the whole. We start to think in broad terms and we engage in non-stop learning. Depending on the organization and the individual, this may take five years, ten years, or most of a working career. But eventually, most of us arrive at the same place, a systems perspective in our industry. What does this mean from a personal perspective? It means that being exposed to a systems education will allow you to more quickly mature in your chosen field. You don't have to wait 10 years to work on your first proposal. You don't have to wait half a lifetime before you finally work on a spectacular project and actually be a major contributor. You can do that when you're young and use the experience to lead you into major positions of authority where you can make a difference. With a systems perspective, you can even stay in your narrow area and truly push the state of the art in that area without stalling your career. No one can accuse you of not appreciating how your narrow specialty fits into the big picture because you will have the ability to show that connection. Let me move into the social perspective. Our world today is very different from the world of our parents. Whether we like it or not, we live in a complex high technology society that surfaced only recently. We take for granted our water, sewage, power, transportation, communication, social, and other systems. These systems were established by the previous generation through hit or miss and usually became successful when early systems practitioners became involved. 
These practitioners were grown out of necessity in the vast collection of non-profit organizations, for-profit companies, and national labs. The body of systems knowledge grew and, until recently, was only found in a few universities. Today, we now know that systems are the essence of our modern high-tech world. And so we must prepare a generation of systems people to not only maintain and improve our existing systems, but develop new systems that will be needed if we are to gracefully live in this new century. We are also finding what we viewed as single standalone systems are now becoming interconnected as the level of needed services increases. So the systems are growing more complex, needing not just a few systems practitioners in isolated organizations, but many systems practitioners found in all organizations. These are powerful words, and you may be asking why the emphasis on systems and the need for so many systems practitioners. There will be systems. These systems will be either good and provide needed benefits with no negative unintended consequences, or they will be bad and provide some benefits but with massive negative unintended consequences. So the trick is to avoid the bad systems. In many ways, this is tied to the recent trends in sustainability. Somehow we always practiced sustainability, otherwise how would we arrive to a point in our history where we have billions of people? So what is the change? What is the difference? The difference today is that our systems and the technologies they use are so powerful that the un unintended consequences of these systems can devastate our lives in our time and our children's lives in the future. It does not matter if the issue is water, energy, sanitation, transportation, communication, social, or other systems. Errors or mistakes in these systems could have devastating consequences, and we as a people sense this, and we discuss sustainability. So the importance of a systems education from the broader social perspective is intimately tied to not only the quality of our life, but to the quality of the life of future generations. There are no governments, institutions, companies, management techniques, political dogma, ideologies, or other engineering, scientific, or technical approaches that are going to get us through the next 100 years of peaceful, sustainable development, except for systems engineering and thinking practiced by people with a solid systems education. This brings me to the final topic of education and why systems education is needed. Before I move into education, let me briefly talk about training. The point being, is there a difference between training and education? In training, a task is narrowly defined. It is fully understood. It is also something that needs to be repeated. Occasionally, legal ramifications may be associated with the task. So a certificate is issued to someone who will perform the highly structured, well-defined, well-understood, repeatable task. Training is what is provided to the individual or team of individuals so that they can perform these tasks without errors. Sometimes the training is classroom, sometimes it is computer-based, sometimes simulators are used, and then there is on-the-job training. The goal is always to imprint the repeatable tasks so that there are no errors. In an education, the student is immersed in a body of knowledge for the specific purpose of entering into an unknown task, such as developing a new product, opening new markets, establishing a new company, or developing a new system. An education attempts to transfer the knowledge, skills, and values to positively shape the mind and character of the next generation. It is something that will allow the student to enter into an unknown space and emerge with a viable, sustainable solution. So systems education is needed because the problems for this new generation are new. They cannot be solved using the approaches from the past. Yes, the past needs to be known, understood, and appreciated. Also following some steps, no matter how brilliant these steps may appear to the originators, cannot solve the new problems facing our future. Only a solid education which exposes the student to previous work, existing practices, and current thoughts on new ideas will allow this new generation to develop the new systems for their time. I warned you to find a picture of beer, bottle of wine, and or crackers. Thank you.